the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Hello, novelist. Hello, physician. Come on in. <laughs> Thought you might be too busy to see a tired old doctor this morning. How's the book, Amy? Still going to the Emerson Publishing House, chapter by chapter. Oh, I'll be looking forward to reading it and saying I knew or when. Well, if it's published... Well, I'm not dreaming any wild dreams about myself as a writer, but at least somebody's reading my stuff, and that means an awful lot. Oh, I'm sure it does, Amy. And I'm all for you. But now that I know the state of the novel, how about the novelist? Me? Oh, I'm fine. Outside of a pair of broken legs, <laughs> nothing really. It's just these pulleys and weights that stretch me out like Monday's washing that bother me so much. <laughs> well, that traction apparatus has kept your legs straight and normal through it all. I know. Trying to use a typewriter with all this paraphernalia, I feel like a boom on a loading dock. <laughs> I've got some good news for you, then. No more traction from now on. We're going to have you taken down later on this morning. Oh, Dr. Kildare, you really mean that? I do. I'm putting you in physiotherapy right away. Pretty soon, wheelchair, then crutches. And after that? Graduation day. Your own two feet, Amy. And I live happy and successful ever after. Ever, ever after. <laughs> because you're the best patient I ever had. No, no, it's because you're the best doctor I ever had. Oh. Or maybe maybe old Iron Jaw is the best doctor. Iron Jaw Gillespie. Yeah, huh? I think he's the best. Oh, what about uh, what about Paul Campbell? He's sort of a doctor, a specialist in matters of your heart, isn't he? You'll never, never be a writer, physician. And Paul won't be a doctor. But he's certainly done his part in helping you recover, Amy. <laughs> I might never have known Paul. Really, if we hadn't been in that accident together, he might have just driven me home and forgotten me. After all, I was just a girl waiting around in the outer office. I didn't have anyone anywhere before I came here. Now look at me. I heard you. You don't have to yell at me. I was born with ears. Uh, if the truth were known, you appeared on the stump one day and were hatched out by the sun. Why, well, I never in all my life. You certainly never. Where's Dr. Kildare? Across the hall, waiting for you in the x-ray room as planned. As planned? As planned. You said you'd meet him there at 2.30. Well, then why didn't you say so? I just did uh, say so. And I have one more thing to say. I was definitely born at St. Mary's Hospital, Hackensack, New Jersey, November 14th, 1902. 1902. 1902. You mean 1802? Oh. <laughs> Probably aboard Columbus's flagship. Dr. Gillespie? Oh, you mean, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. What are these? X-rays on Amy Dickens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, mending process seems to be advancing nicely. I'd like to have her in a wheelchair by the end of the week, if possible. Aren't you rushing things a bit, Jimmy? Well, I don't think so. She's in a fine state of mind, eager to get on her feet again, probably to get married. Yeah, I suppose so. Paul Campbell, of course. Of course. Who else comes to see her every day? Jimmy, 
I've been meaning to speak with you about that. Oh? I know Amy Dickens is your patient, and the... Hello? Anybody here? Oh, Paul, Paul, Hi, Paul. Come in, boy. Come in. We were just talking about you. How are you, Dr. Gillespie? Hey. Dr. Kildare? Fine, Paul. How's Amy? Dr. Gillespie and I have just been going over her x-rays. She's making wonderful progress. We've taken her off traction. Really coming along fine. That's good news. Anything that makes her well. As you know, I'm the guy who was driving the car. I put her in the hospital. If it hadn't been for me, she wouldn't be lying upstairs now. I want to do everything I can. And you are, Paul. If it weren't for you, I'm afraid Amy would be much further away from recovery than she is at this point. She was in pretty bad shape. Oh, I understand. You've placed her novel. Not exactly. I've... I, I've given it to my boss, Mr. Emerson. I hope he likes it, although Amy doesn't expect him to buy it and publish it right away. Oh, that's good. A severe disappointment in her life right now could be disastrous. Well, just getting Mr. Emerson to read it seems to be good enough for Amy. Yeah. It's about all she thinks about, so I, I'd say her recovery was pretty much in your hands. I'm beginning to realize that, Doctor. Could I see her? Oh, it's a little early in the day for visiting, but I suppose it's all right. Thanks, Doctor. Jimmy, hmm? I don't like it. I don't like it a little bit. What do you mean? Has it occurred to you that the medical safety of Amy Dickens rests entirely in that young man's hands? Oh, he's been a big help to her. I have all the faith in the world in Paul and in Amy's spirit. Oh, so have I. But not in the complications that are the byproducts of love. Or maybe I'm just getting old. Oh, well, remember, she was alone and friendless before she knew him. Now she has him and a career to look yeah. forward to. I wish all my patients had the same accruements. But his role as a lover and an advisor doesn't make him a doctor. No. You know? And no matter what her progress, Amy Dickens still requires competent medical care. <sighs> Maybe I should clamp down on her. Whip and saddle type of care. Oh, no, 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 don't smile, <laughs> I don't want to interfere. She's your patient, and you're in the best position to prescribe for her. Yeah, well, shall we get on with these other things? Well, I think the ride's over for today, Amy. Here we are, back in your room, safe and sound. How do you feel? Just a little dizzy. <laughs> well, you can't expect anything different your first time in a wheelchair. After all, you've been flat on your back for a long time. I certainly don't want to be this week when I'm downtown talking to Mr. Emerson. After all, what would he think? Hey, whoa, 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 slow down there. What? Well, what do you mean when you're downtown talking to Mr. Emerson? Oh, well, you do have a special ambulance for wheelchair patients, and I thought I could sort of go out for a drive one of these days and... Sort oh, of. and sort of drop in and talk to your publisher? That's exactly it. I see. So what is all this? Well, Dr. Gillespie, I had a letter from Floyd Emerson today, and he says he likes what he's seen of my novel, and he wants to discuss it with me as soon as I'm out of the hospital. But that won't be for months, Dr. Kildare. Please. Well, once you get over the dizziness, I don't see why not. The outing might do you some oh, good. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. This means everything to me. All right, but right now, young lady, rest. All right. Rest. Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare. Oh, I'm glad I found you both together. Hi, Paul. Amy just told me you're letting her go downtown in a special ambulance. Yeah, you? that's right. She's going to call on you and Mr. Emerson. You knew he wrote her about her book. Doctor, don't let her do it. Oh, it's medically feasible. She'll be all right. You see, even Dr. Gillespie admits that. I know, but... You... What is it, Paul? Is something wrong? Well, even if she goes down to Mr. Emerson's office, she can't see him. What? I work in his office, and I can't even see him. Paul, what are you trying to say? Well, Mr. Emerson didn't write Amy that letter. Hmm? I wrote it, and I signed his name. Hmm. Mr. Emerson's never seen any of her work. You mean you've been lying to that girl all these months? I wanted to do everything, anything I could to help her get on her feet. Now, do you realize what you've done? Instead of encouraging her all this time, you've been misleading her. About the book, yes, but not about myself. I love her very much. 
I thought I'd be able to get the book in Emerson's hands before Amy got out of the hospital. But I can't even get to him now. Oh, I'm a heel of the first water. Dr. Kildare. Yes, Parker. Your nurse just phoned. She wants you right upstairs, the surgeon, about Amy Dickton. Thanks, Parker. I'll go right up. Hello, novelist. Well, no work today? Hmm. Chapter 7. Coming right along, eh? I suppose so. You know, my nurse told me something I can hardly believe. She said you refused to stay in your wheelchair today, but you asked to be brought right back to bed. I was in it long enough to make a phone call from Miss Fermer's office. Oh, I see. I called... I called up to make an appointment with my publisher, Mr. Emerson. Amy, please. The secretary said he'd never heard of me or of my novel. I can't believe him anymore. Oh, Any of you. How do I know you're not lying to me about my legs? Maybe I'll never walk again. You will walk again, Amy. You'll <laughs> walk and you'll write. Oh, it hurt me. I feel funny and weak and empty. The same way I feel in Amy, stop this. You've all lied to me. Amy, please. I'll never walk or ride or do anything I want to do. <laughs> Get out of here. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Excuse me, Dr. Gillespie. I, I didn't know you were busy. Come in, Jimmy. Come in. Turn on the lights, please. Hmm. I was just trying to get a sharper focus on this X-ray light. But I've seen all I need to see. Amy Dickens, eh? Yeah. Well, what do you think, Doctor? She's getting worse. Notice the increase in muscle atrophy in a single week? Yes, I notice. She won't cooperate. She's just talked herself into not recovering. If only that boy hadn't lied to him. He tried to do what he thought was best, mm. and it backfired, that's all. He feels absolutely miserable over what he's done. Mm. He begged for a chance to straighten things out. Truth is the only alternative here. He's got to realize exactly what he's done. And Amy Dickens must be made to realize all of the facts. You can't pamper a patient with rosy pictures of... Be- Come in! Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Uh. Dr. Kildare. Hi, Paul. I came over as soon as I could get off. I want to go up and see Amy. Oh. Well, uh, she doesn't want to see you, Paul. Oh. Well, I I guess I can't blame her. She's a very unhappy girl. Doesn't want to see anybody or do anything. She just lies in bed looking at the ceiling. She won't even try to get up and use her wheelchair. I was just trying to encourage her. I want you to know that. I didn't think it made any difference how I did it, as long as I did it. I'm not a psychologist or a medicine man. I'm just an average guy who did the best he could. We know that, Paul. And don't think we've been reading the riot act to you. We just wanted you to have a clear picture of how things stood. And then we can proceed with the repairs. I'll do anything. Anything at all. Believe me. 
I love Amy, and I want her to get well. I called you over, Paul, because everything seems to revolve around the publisher, Floyd Emerson. Now, if you could just get Emerson genuinely interested in Amy and prove it to her, it might fix things up. I'm afraid Amy's more disappointed in me than Mr. Emerson. Oh, that's not quite true, Paul, but that could be remedied, too. Now, my suggestion is that you make your promise good and somehow get Emerson really interested in Amy's work. I'll try. <laughs> Why, Dr. Gillespie, you're getting so old you can't see. It's hanging around your neck. Huh? Oh, oh, you sort of, that's right. Uh, light's kind of bad in here. Light? Huh? You ask me, you're about ready for retirement. For retirement? retirement? Why, you old crone, I'll be practicing medicine years after you entered the old lady's home. They'll have you. No, well, they probably won't if they heard I've been working for you. Oh, is that so? What are you doing with a stethoscope, anyway? My watch has been running slow, and I'm listening to see if it has a murmur or something. Well, I'll be hanged. I hope so. I'll get it, Parker. I'll get it. I'll get it. You can go. Dr. Gillespie speaking. Doctor, this is Paul Campbell. Oh, well, Paul. How'd you make out? Terrible. I couldn't get an appointment with Mr. Emerson, so I tried to force my way into his office. And guess what? What? I was fired. No. Yes, Mr. Emerson and his secretary got real mad. I was thrown out and paid off so fast I didn't even get Amy's manuscript back. It's still with Mr. Emerson's secretary. And the building police have orders not to let me in again. Uh, this sounds unusually grim. I've messed things up again, Doctor. Well, for the time being, just sit tight and wait until you hear from Dr. Kildare or myself. Gee, but I'm out of a job, and I, I've lost Amy. Oh, I know, son, I know. But maybe it can be straightened out yet. I, I'll call you later. Goodbye. Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. I'm glad you came in. Mm. I just talked to Paul Campbell. Oh, what did he say? Oh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Just for trying to get in to see the great Mr. Emerson, he was fired. Fired? Must be a strange man. Yeah. Well, I won't take this sitting down. What are you going to do now? Going downtown and see Emerson myself. What are you going to try and prove? Just trying to prove that people are human and have feelings and care about their fellow men. I never doubted it for a minute, Jimmy. I want to go with you. My secretary said you told her it was an important matter. You perhaps have a medical book you're interested in publishing. Well, this company publishes only fiction titles. No, 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 Mr. Emerson. We didn't come here with a medical book for you to publish. No? No, no. To put it quickly, we came to talk about a patient of ours named Amy Dickens. Amy Dickens? Oh, that. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. This is not a college for would-be writers. And the affrontery of that girl to use the name Dickens. Oh, this is an unusual medical case, and we thought that if we explained Look, it to... Look, I have already fired one man because of it. And I intend to take up no more of my time worrying about it. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. Emerson, just one word, please. Our schedule is as busy as yours, and we have a young girl who's eager and rich in promise. And we took the time to come down and talk to you about it. Didn't seem to be an unnecessary strain on anybody's time, but perhaps my sense of values is distorted or something. Perhaps if I were more like you, I'd be more successful, whatever that is. But I'd trade a bestseller any day for the warm love of a human being I respect. Shall we go, Dr. Gillespie? Not before I say this. Emerson, if you ever get ill, don't show up at Blair General Hospital, or I'm likely to cut all the meanness out of you, and your life wouldn't be worth living. Come on, Jimmy. I can't wait to get out of here. Well. Well, what, Barker? Are you and Dr. Kildare just going to sit around staring at the floor, or are you going to do some work today? Oh, get out of here. Yeah. Oh, Dr. Carew called. He said he had a complaint from a Mr. Emerson that you threatened to commit mayhem on him. I did. And I would. He just said it in the excitement of the moment, Parker. You mm, know. I wonder. 
Well, Doctor, I guess we'd better do it. That's the only thing left to do. Mm. Nothing's worked so far. Just go up to her and tell her what she's in for. And what she can do for herself without anyone's help. And let her take it from there. I suppose so. Hope it does. Dr. Busby, there's a man outside. I tried to tell him you were out. Yeah, but, but he... he's right here. Hello, Doctor. Well, well. If it isn't the publishing tycoon. Don't tell me you're sick and need an operation, Mr. Emerson. It just so happens I have some time. I deserved it, Dr. Gillespie. It took a while to sink in. Dr. Kildare, I thought I'd return the consideration and come to see you in your office. Well, I'm a little flabbergasted, but uh, sit down, Mr. Emerson. Sit down. Thank you. I want you to know that I'm sorry for my performance during your little visit yesterday. It was wrong of me. You seem to have quite a change of mind all of a sudden. Well, it would seem so. Hmm. I spent all last night reading this manuscript by Amy Dickens. What did you think of it? Gentlemen, this manuscript has enough wild situations and characters for seven novels. Hmm. And I think all of them would be exceedingly bad. Uh, I was hoping for something else. So was I. However, there are some good points. This girl has a lively imagination. She needs discipline and an understanding of story construction. She might be a writer someday. Uh, I'm sorry it couldn't have turned out better. Nonsense. I think it turned out just fine. After all, one young man and two doctors have made strenuous efforts to encourage her. I can, too. Now, if the hospital rules permit, I'd like to speak with this girl and tell her in person just what I think of her, her writing, and her future. novelist. Oh, oh, Dr. Kildare, you startled me. Hmm? Low position. Starting a new chapter? No, just doing some writing exercises. How do you like this? I've been in my wheelchair five hours Five today. hours? I think that's swell, Amy. Yeah, I've never felt better in my life. Imagine Mr. Emerson taking Paul back into the office and then offering me a job as a reader when I get out of here. He's really a generous man. Oh, well, it won't be a big job, but it will give me a chance to learn. I'm sure you'll do very well when you start back on your novel. Oh, no, I'm going to throw that away. Wasn't, what? Wasn't very good, really. <laughs> but I got a great plot for a new one. Oh, tell me about that. Well, it's all about a girl, see? Yeah. In a hospital who wants to be a writer. Uh-huh. And there's a boy who wants to help her, but the boy's so darn much in love with her that he lies to her. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare. Starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Here you are, Dr. Gillespie, your stomach pills. Stomach pills? I don't want any stomach pills. Take them away. I am going to stand right here until you swallow them. Well, whose hair-brained idea was this? Stomach pills. Yours? You prescribed them for yourself this morning. Said your stomach was bothering you. Oh, well, since then I found out that my belt buckle was twisted and digging into me. Oh, I'm not going to fall for a story like that. Now, come on, come no, on. Oh, all right. Water. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ooh, what awful tasting. Oh, stop being a baby. I've watched you give out thousands of these. Hey, what's going on in here? Oh, she's been trying to poison me with some green pills. Dr. Oh. Kildare, this man is impossible. Do you know what I found him doing today? No, I couldn't imagine. Reading a book called The Last of the Great Huzzies. You should see the cover. Right, Shack a sailor. Oh, Parker, it's a historical novel. History. Yeah, the history of what, I'd like to know. Well, I've been reading the same book myself, Parker. It's not half bad. You? Well, I've heard everything. This is no place for a woman with any grief. <laughs> Poor Parker. 
Oh, I uh, just came from Amy Dickens' room. Ah, what a grand girl she is. Oh, I know. So much courage, good humor, and charm. Jimmy, are you by any chance falling for this young lady? No, Dr. G. Ah, don't Dr. G me. Put an intelligent, pretty girl and a handsome man together Mm. for some months and things develop. No, that's nothing like that. Besides, she and Paul are going to be married. Well, just to make sure, I've arranged a little program for you tonight. Here you are. Dinner reservations, two tickets to the theater... And the corsage. But, but who am I going with? I have arranged for her to get the night off. Her name is Diana Verna. Yeah. She's a nurse around here, in case you haven't noticed lately. <laughs> okay, Doctor, you win. But what are you going to do tonight? I am going to sit up and finish reading The Last of the Great Huzzies. <laughs> just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by John Michael Hayes and E. Jack Newman and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, William Bakewell, Peggy Weber, and Earl Ross. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 